Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudillalah wa man yudlil fala hadiyalah wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'du fa inna astaqal haditsi kitabullah wa khairul hadyi hadyu muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa sharral umuri muhdatsatuha wa kullu muhdatsatin bid'ah wa kullu bid'atin dalalatin wa kullu dalalatin fin nar rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beginning this journey of revitalizing our iman and inshallah hopefully trying to remain steadfast in what could be classified as either minor days of fitan and for some of us major days of fitan even though we know that the real fitan if you read compilations of a hadith like Imam Muslim Sahih, you find Kitab al-Fitan, the Book of Fitan, and other such ulama who compiled works talking about the end of time and the fitan that human beings will face. And for many of us, we tend to perceive that the fitan at the moment are major tribulations. And this is really a perspective of one's deen. The weaker one's iman, the weak will be the fitna or the fitan and many people will crumble over these minor fitan which have been classified, classified by many of the ulama in the arena that we live in at the moment that for some of us petty remarks petty actions will make us crumble and so we need to return back to focus upon wasailu thabat ala deenillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala ways of remaining steadfast steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember the human being has been created by nature to go through various changes whether it be the physical changes from the beginning of being a baby or before that being nutfa and then developing to become the human being so man is full of change the human being is full of change the environment around us begins to change as well nothing is ever constant even iman fluctuates it changes and thus we've been encouraged inside the sunnah to find that when your iman falls or it comes down try to find your iman to be constant upon the Quran and the sunnah because many young individuals have a great zeal a great passion and then they begin to fall and when they fall they've plummet all the way down and give up everything that they had gained before so one should find the way of Ahlul Sunnah in the middle وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا we made you the middle nation, the just nation don't go to one extreme of being overzealous and don't go to the other extreme of giving up your deen and turning away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at times the obstructions, the trials are placed there to begin to find out who are the real devotees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember even the non-Muslims they face certain challenges on a daily basis what keeps them going? is it the the end light at the end of the tunnel that you find? and we know that the light for them is a prestige, the honor, the dignity, the position, the status, the rank which is given to them the wealth, the fame that is something that gives them that energy that boost of Iman linguistically to carry on their tasks to gain what they want to gain from this dunya and even when it comes to times of affliction and hardship remember they have courageous individuals as well who will be focused as the Quran documents فَإِنَّهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ كَمَا تَعْلَمُونَ they face affliction and pain just like you face affliction and pain but the difference between the Muslim Ummah and those individuals is وَتَرْجُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَرْجُونَ 
what you aspire for to gain and want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different from what they want to gain. As we mentioned, their perception is a gaining of the dunya. So what keeps them focused? And why don't we, on many occasions, lose that focus? Remember, the more that you burn gold, the more it becomes purified. The more you shine a diamond, the more it sparkles. The more you test a believer, the more firm he come, becomes in his or her iman. That is the science of Islam that these people are trying to discover. That what keeps these people so preserved and keeps them upon perseverance and focus and, focus and devotion towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for us being a Muslim, even if you are an average Muslim, you have to face the trials and temptations. Living in this country, living in the West, one always has to be in a state of struggling, of observing their prayers, observing their Islamic rights and regulations, sticking to the halal and avoiding the haram. That's all of us. You cannot classify it's only for a learned individual that they will face certain trials and tribulations or it's somebody who may know the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just an average Muslim. No, every single Muslim will face the fitan, will face trials and tribulations, or will face a concept of trying to find out are you really deserving to be called people of Iman? Do you really live up to the title of being a believer? And that's you find inside the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut, the 29th chapter of the Quran, Alif Lam Mim, Ahasib al Nasu and Yutraku and Yakulu Amanna Wahum La Yuftanun, Wala Kad Fatan al Ladina Min Kablihim. Do you perceive to say that you say you believe and you will not be tested? Indeed, we did test the people before you. فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ So we may discover, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may highlight who are the truthful ones and those individuals who are the liars. That's what Iman is all about. To find out if there is real conviction inside your heart. And that is the prestige and the honor that, that was given to the companions. It's not kathratul a'mal or kathratul amal, excessive action. وَلَكِنْ مَا وَقَرَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ But that which entered into their heart. To give them that devotion and commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, we find such ayat inside Surah Al-Baqarah. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ We will test you for the loss of your lives, your souls, your property, the fruits, people around you. You'll be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the real individuals who when they face that calamity, that loss, they say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we belong and to Him we will return. So that's a package of being a Muslim and believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus you find that even at stages, it became difficult for the Anbiya. It became difficult for them. That they even made such statements, if you look at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. Do you perceive to just enter into paradise? As many of us that we think. Has not the parable come of those people that came before you? You find that they were afflicted with adversities, calamities, hardships, وَزُلْزِلُوا And the earth was shaken underneath them. And what happened then? Until even the messenger states, حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ Until the messenger even states, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعُوا مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ When will the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come? أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ Indeed, the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very close. Imagine, this is the messenger making this statement and the believers around him. Today you find that people begin to highlight, take the law into their own hand. The path of Islam is a long journey. إِنَّ هَذَا Indeed, this path is a long path, a long journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be many trials and tribulations until eventually one comes to the end to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the secret is, your efforts will not go to waste. Because many people think they have to get to the end. They have to reach the fruits in their life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on many occasions is destined for individuals never to see the fruits in this world. They will come at a later stage. The fruits of the da'wah of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the days that we just went through. He made supplication in an empty barren land. Did he ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why are you telling me to pray in this empty land? 
billions have responded to that to that to that call wa adhin fin nas call out to mankind to come to the hajj upon every lean camel and what is the response today you find millions are performing that hajj so likewise today the way of the muslim is just to give the call to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hikmatullahi balikha that's the wisdom of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if the fruits are preserved and presented in this dunya then that's something full of goodness and khair if not then the journey continues con- continues towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because a believer remembers wama rabbuka bibalamin lil abid your lord does not oppress the believers the servants likewise wama kana allah liyudhi'a imanakum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let your iman go to waste here bi ma'na as salah your prayers but likewise the wider meaning every action that you do will not go to waste don't lose hope don't fret don't despair don't give up don't become frustrated as many young individuals they do continue the journey towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will show you the fruits of your actions either in this life or even when you've been lifted away by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the current tests and obstacles that you find and nothing but to highlight those individuals who remain steadfast and firm upon the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some individuals what they begin to do is they flee away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the quran highlights the opposite fafirru ila allah flee to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so times of affliction and difficulties the the science is not to give up your deen to waver away the science is to return back and flee back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's the whole theme of this conference and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it successful for all of us inshallah is that simple hadith that you find al qabid ala dinihi kal qabid ala jamar the one who is going to be holding on to his deen a time will come holding on to his deen it will be like holding on to hot coal and if you study the signs of hot coal that is very difficult to grasp that inside your hand that is how difficult it will become for the individual to remain stagnant and firm upon their deen obviously that's something fearful but at the same time we remember that the prophet muhammad some came between giving the nadir and giving the bushra the glad tidings and as we know from the signs of the quran as well fa inna ma al usri yusra inna ma al usri yusra after every hardship there will come ease after every hardship there will come ease so once you pass the test of difficulties there will be ease presented upon you likewise in the hadith wa alam anna ma al usri yusra know for a fact that with difficulty comes ease they both put together coupled together after the difficulty will come the ease but obviously many of us when we're going through that time of difficulty we turn away and that's you find that the work works of the ulama talking about so many benefits even for many of us when we're making dua ila allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as imam ibn qayyim al jawziyah highlights a famous student of sheikh islam ibn taymiyyah that you're making dua and your fruits are ripening the fruits are about to ripen to such a degree they're about to fall upon you that is dua but man out of isti'jal out of hastiness grabs the fruit before it's about to drop down into his hand gives up hope that's what many of us have become we give up hope very quickly we give up hope we think that there must be a quick solution there is no quick solution in islam there is no quick fix it's a long long path towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the path of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa anna hadha sirati mustaqiman fattabi'u this is the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow that path and according to tafsir of this verse inside surah al-an'am as had mentioned by abdullah bin mas'ud the prophet muhammad sallam drew a long line and said this is the path of islam and on the, these are the shorter paths that you find you find at the end of them nothing but the devil waiting there so there's other short paths that people will call towards and sometimes they may be even be a nob- noble cause or mesmerize individuals but the end of that path will be nothing but the devil waiting there for the individual likewise in the quran we find say yaj'alullahu ba'da usrin yusra indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place ease after every single difficulty so the mu'min needs to believe in the in these ayat that there will be is given for the individual after times of difficulty and that's this dunya and in the hereafter allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this privilege to certain individuals yuthabbitu allah alladhina amanu bil qawli thabiti fil hayati ad dunya fil akhira allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make ithbat of certain individuals bil qawli thabit with the affirm statement ulama tafsir highlight al qawl thabit bi ma'na la ilaha illallah you remain upon tawhid remain upon the oneness glorifying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you remain firm upon that and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you ithbat in this world you will be firm upon that belief 
and likewise inside the akhirah when you return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَيُذِلُّ اللَّهُ الظَّالِمِينَ وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends astray the oppressors the people doing wrong, the wrongdoers وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does whatever befits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala no one can question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala بَلْ هُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ not even the messengers can question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everyone will be asked no one can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certain traits that begin to take place in this Muslim ummah and we study them in great detail you find nothing but khair and goodness for us we find the human perception that we see harm, bloodshed, calamities, earthquakes, tribulations taking place but if you look straight through them you find a greater focus of how many individuals begin to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become devotees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in today's language you find the focus of Hajj where you find millions attend the Hajj if a small percentage are crushed or they die and even though that's a form of being a shaheed or being a martyr in that state a few hundred die if you place that percentage in the millions that go there it's not even 0.0001% probably does it mean much that they've been lifted, they've been taken away? So likewise, if a few individuals go through hardships, but thousands return back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thousands begin to flock back, begin to focus on your deen. Obviously, it is crude and harsh that some individuals may suffer, go through some hardship. But the opposite of how many will, the influx of the individuals who return back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outweighs those few individuals who need to go through that hardship, and even that hardship for them is lifted. It becomes a form of rukhsa, ease for them, and their sins, and they are purified for the mistakes they may have possibly made upon this dunya. Likewise, we find in الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهُ الْمَلَائِكَ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءَكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Look at such glad tidings. In الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Those people who state our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they remain steadfast upon that. And then the angels come down upon them and say, don't fear, don't grieve. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ Have glad tidings of paradise because of what you used to do. And you find that Imam al-Hassan al-Basri, whenever you recite this verse, he will ask, Ya Allah, give me, make me upon istiqama, make me steadfast, make me a devotee of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time he came across this verse. Give me istiqama. That is the way of the believer to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those individuals who are guided and firm upon the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, you find he made the statement, Allahumma anta rabbuna farzuqna al-istiqama. Oh Allah, you are our Lord, give us, provide us, give us sustenance. Because that's what rizq is. But the rizq he's asking here is the rizq of istiqama. So many times we always ask about the dunya, we need good in the world. And obviously that's the dua of the believer which is acceptable. Rabbana atina fi dunya hassana wa fil akhirati hassana wa qina ala bannar. But a more inner supplication the believer is what? Give me istiqama. Keep me firm upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise a similar verse, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَنُونَ Once again the secret in this verse, don't think that istiqama will be given to you. جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَنُونَ Reward because of what you used to do, the actions you tried to do in this dunya. As Imam al-Hassan al-Basri highlights, ليس الإيمان بالتمني ولا تحلي Iman isn't just false aspirations that I aspire to have Iman and don't carry the journey of Iman. That's what many Muslims have become. That everything about them, my Islam is inside my heart. My hijab is inside my heart. My beard is inside my heart. My prayers are inside my heart. That's what it's become for many individuals. All type of deviant views. Everybody has their own supplication, their own prayer, whatever they want to do. No, it's according to whatever the Quran highlights and explained by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise, you find the order given to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ And he remains steadfast with the commandments which have been given to you. This verse inside Surah Hud, when it was sent down, you find in tafsir is mentioned by Imam Suyuti fi Durr al-Manthur, شَيِّبَتْنِ هُودٌ وَأَخَوَاتُهَا Surah Hud, the 11th chapter, has yani, made my hair go grey, go white. How is that possible? The reading of the Qur'an made the hair of the Prophet Muhammad go grey, go white, colour. شَيِّبَتْنِ هُودٌ وَأَخَوَاتُهَا Hud and his sister surahs. Study these surahs talking about the final day, the calamities, the destruction, the hardship that begin to take place. Likewise, Imam Suyuti highlights as well, فَمَا رُؤِيَ ضَاحِكًا 
after this surah was sent down, the Prophet Muhammad was never seen laughing after that day. Wasn't seen laughing. And remember the Prophet Muhammad would only laugh on rare occasions that you could visualize his back teeth on certain occasions. As for many of us today, we become an ummah of just entertainment. That's all that we think about. How can we just enjoy ourselves, enjoy our lives? The ummah doesn't have time to enjoy itself anymore. The actions of yesterday, the day before yesterday, of what 200 so odd individuals have just been totally annihilated, taken away. We don't weep, we don't cry, we don't think about these calamities. All that we think about how thousands can get together and clap their hands and rejoice together and chant the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sing praises regarding the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is all a misunderstanding of deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't mean we don't have an entertainment, there is time for entertainment according to the Quran and the Sunnah. There is entertainment. But to become an ummah of just lahu wa la'ib, of play and amusement, shows the downfall and the, the bad state of this Muslim ummah that this is given preference over returning back and establishing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ يعني أهواء desires what takes many of us away. Remain steadfast on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تتبع أَهْوَاءَهُمْ Don't fall into false desires, temptations that take place around you. Once again a commandment given to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the meaning of al-istiqama? Ulama have talked about al-istiqama bima'na istiqama ala tawheed to remain firm upon the belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lam yushriku billahi shay'a. Never associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Istaqamu ala fara'id. Those are individuals who remain stagnant upon the fara'id, the obligatory actions. That's where many of us, we get excited. We begin to talk about tertiary issues, other issues. We begin to talk, get so worried about them, get so frantic about individuals. If the hijab side is right, if the trousers is correct, if this is right, that. No, these are important issues, there's no doubt about it. But make tarbi of your own self. Don't become so focusing upon the external that you forget the core elements within you. Because eventually over time, if you're not rectified, purified inside your heart and focused and devoted, the external will begin to crumble very quickly. And we see that visually many times, brothers who've been around us, who've grown their beards and remain upon the sunnah, after a month or so month, the fit and come and everything is taken away from them. Hatta to such a degree, may Allah subhanahu wa protect us, they don't even pray five times a day. That's how bad it becomes for certain individuals. Is that how weak your iman has become? Try to focus, make tarbiyah of your iman to be focused and stagnant upon istaqamu ala fara'id, the obligatory actions that you have to do. And we know that the basic obligatory actions living in the West are difficult. We're not living in a Muslim arena, whereby in a Muslim arena you can just stop and get up and pray whenever you want to pray. No one can stop you. Walk in however you want to walk in, dress whenever you want, go for Jum'ah. No one can really stop you in a Muslim land, no matter how corrupt they may be. There's still that freedom that exists there, no matter what anyone highlights, because alhamdulillah, traveling through the Muslim land is quite visible. But here you find more and more the dhaq, the difficulties that begin to take place of people trying to display their deen, of simple basic things that every single Muslim should be doing, there's no difference of opinion. But people are beginning to shy away from them and not remaining firm and steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, you find istiqama here in yathbut al-insan ala shari'atillah. Istiqama is to keep yourself firm upon the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالُ الْعُلَمَاء مَعَنَ الْإِسْتِقَامَ لُزُومْ طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَى The meaning of istiqama is luzum, hold fast, remain committed upon ta'atu Allahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, obedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The order of remaining steadfast is not just for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's for all of us. As an individual came and asked this question, قُلْ لِي فِي الْإِسْلَامِ قَوْلٌ لَا أَسْأَلُ عَنْهُ أَحَدًا خَيْرًا Give me one statement, give me one statement, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that I cannot ask any other individual. قَالَ The Prophet Muhammad made this statement, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Say, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Remain steadfast upon that in the hadith, in the sahih of Imam Muslim. So once again, belief and what? Action. That is the way of Islam, that's the way of Ahlul Sunnah. You believe and then you follow that up with actions is the way and the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And very quickly, ways of remaining steadfast. Because that's just the muqaddama of the trials and the tribulations. How can we practically remain steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ulama have collected various forms. Awalan al-iqbal wa al-Qur'an. Firstly, to take from the Qur'an, to reflect over the Qur'an, to drink from the Qur'an, the fountain of the Qur'an. Whereby many thousands are memorizing anashid, memorizing this, that and the other. Learn the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Study it, read the tafsir, understand the ma'ani, the meanings of the words, the possible meanings of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا The disbelievers say, why doesn't the Qur'an come down في دُفْعَةٍ وَاحِدًا In one revelation like the previous books came down. Why? كَذَلِكَ 
لنثبت به فؤادك that we may make make your heart steadfast ya rasulullah make your heart firm that's why the quran has been sent down in tadarruj in steps in stages to strengthen your heart that's the reading the quran from the beginning and all the way to the end strengthen your heart begin once again don't complete the recitation and close the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kitab allah wa ra'a dhuhurihim ka'annahum la ya'lamun for the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind their backs as if they don't know the book is not just for ramadan throughout your life شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. This is a book of Allah subhanahu wa taala sent down for what purpose? Guidance for mankind, not guidance for the dead individuals, for the living individuals. Take from the Quran, not just in the month of Ramadan, but outside the month of Ramadan. ورتلناه ترتيلا. And likewise, we sent it down in form of ترتيل. ولا يأتونك بمثل إلا جئناك بالحق وإحسان تفسيرا وإحسان تفسيرا. We don't bring any parable, but we bring a better parable forward in this examples inside the Quran and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, wastaqim kama umirt. Remain steadfast if you commanded to do so. Imam Sufyan al Thawri highlights, istaqim al Quran. Remain steadfast upon the Quran. Return back to the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the greatest lessons that you find inside the Quran is what is classified as qasas al anbiya, which Imam ibn Kathir has written a whole book, a whole kitab talking about stories of the prophets. Because in the stories of the prophets, you find everything the individual is searching for. Whatever you may be thinking about trials and tribulations, they're petty, they're minor compared to what the Anbiya went through. وَكُلَّ النَّقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ Every time we narrate the stories of the prophets down to you, is to strengthen your heart. Go back and read قَصَصُ النَّبِيِّينَ Read the stories of the prophets, قَصَصُ الْأَنْبِيَا Read the stories about them and the calamities that they went through. Beginning with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan. Ibrahim alayhi salam was one man, one nation. You know, sometimes with this perception, you need many individuals to create an ummah. There will be times in this Muslim ummah, one man will become one nation. Abu Bakr Siddiq was one man, became one nation. Wallahi, la uqatilanna man farraka bayna salati wa zakah. I will fight those individuals who make a distinction between the prayer and the zakah. And likewise, Imam Ahmed, who people champion his cause of being Imam of Ahl Sunnah. Why is he classified as Imam Ahl Sunnah? Why? On that day of the Mihna, the Inquisition, the Fitan, the trials, the tribulations, many of the ulama of Hanabila, they gave up. They took a backward stance. But Imam Ahmad, he remained steadfast. One man changed the course of this nation. So don't ever think you need a group, a majmu'ah at times. One, one alim, one scholar can take a stance, take the whole stance of this Muslim ummah to highlight this is what needs to be done to return back to the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We find Ibrahim alayhi salam. قَالُوا حَرِّكُوهُ وَانْصُرُوا آلِهَتَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ فَاعِلِينَ they said, burn him, throw him inside the fire if you want to rescue your gods. And what happened to Ibrahim when he was thrown inside the fire? وَقُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِ بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ It became peaceful for Ibrahim The best days, ulama of Tafasir, they write, the best days of his life, you know, his narration needs to be checked, but the meaning is there. The best days of his life were inside the fire. Rejoicing inside when he hit the fire. Remaining, وَقُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِ بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيم this is what Ibrahim went through and he was thrown into the fire. This fire, you find the ulama of the they highlight, these were the first individuals to invent the catapult. He was thrown. Even the birds flying over the fire were roasted, were burned, alive. But he hit the fire and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the sunnah of burning and made it something peaceful for Ibrahim alayhi salam. Likewise, we find Musa alayhi salam. فَلَمَّا تَرَى الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ قَالَ كَلَّا إِنَّا مَعِيَ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ When they saw the two groups coming, to overtake Musa and his followers. What happened? The Iman quivered. They crumbled. They melted. They said, Inna la mudrakun, we're going to be overtaken. Look at the faith of Musa. Qala kalla, inna ma'iya rabbi sayahdeen. Nay, with me is my Lord, and he will guide us. After everything that took place, Bani Israel still crumbled. They gave up their Iman, but Musa was firm upon his Iman. Yusuf, the greatest lessons that you find, the 12th chapter of the Quran. Right from the beginning, you find نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Indeed, the best of the stories we mention inside the Qur'an occur inside the surah, of su the 12th chapter of the Qur'an, Surah Yusuf. Likewise, the end, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in their stories is an ibra, a lesson for you. And this surah was sent down in the year of Amul Huzn, the year of grief, to highlight to the Prophet Muhammad that all the grief that you've gone through, the difficulties you've gone through, Look at the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. The only surah in the Quran right from the beginning to the end following one same story from the beginning to the end 
and a few ayat inside the end talking about some other issues. But a generally a complete surah. So every time your iman is taken away, you feel sad, you're feeling down. And you find, la tahsan, don't grieve. As some of the ulama have written risalat, such works titled by such focuses. Ulul izm, ulul azm, people of great yani, focus and yani, devotion that you find. Thirdly, we find ad dua ad dua ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such supplication, Rabbana la tuziq qulubana ba'da idha daytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al wahab. Rabbana aflik alayna sabra wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al qawmi al kafirin. Inside sujood, ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Ya musarrif al qulub, sarrif qalbi ala ta'atik. Excessive dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would say, don't even leave me for the blinking of an eye. We get left for many hours and we go off the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking such supplications. Remain me firm, keep me firm and steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, we find, or fourthly, dhikrullah. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu, idha laqeetum fi'atan fathbutu, wadhkurullah kathiran la'allakum tuflihun. These ayat inside Surah An-Nisa are talking about ayat al-jihad. You meet the enemy, remain firm upon the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're not in jihad at the moment. Outside the days of jihad, what do you find? Even more, become firm upon the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you successful, which many of us have forgotten. And you find many ahadith, keep your tongue moist with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many of us have become full of academia. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. Kalimatani, khafifatani, habibatani, lirahman, thaqilatani, ala al-mizan. All these ahadith, they just go over our mind, we don't pay attention to them. We think it's got something to do with the with the Sawwuf or Sufiya or whatever. No, it's the way of Ahl Sunnah to say La ilaha illallah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, kanzun, kanzun min kunuz al jannah. From amongst the treasures of paradise, to say the kalima, to say subhanallah, to say alhamdulillah, say Allahu Akbar. That's the way of the believer. Make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the prayer, when you go to sleep, walk in the marketplace, wherever you are. That is revival of dhikr, will make you firm upon the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, we find fourthly, Mumaras of da'wa ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To give da'wa ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you call people to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not about winning the argument or convincing individuals. Every time you preach the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a reflection of your own self. Because that's what Islam teaches us. I told this individual to do something, do I do it myself? Do I establish the readings of the Quran in my own life? Do I make dhikr in my own life? Do I establish the sunnah in my own life? That's what Islam is. That's why da'wah is encouraged by the ulama, encouraged by the Qur'an as well. فَلِذَلِكَ فَدْعُوا وَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْدْ And likewise, go out and call to people, invite people, and then remain steadfast upon that. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ Indeed, this is nothing but a dhikr for all of the worlds. لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمْ Once again, whoever wants to become steadfast. So a way of becoming steadfast is giving the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving people the maw'idah, the admonition, the reminder. To remind them, Al-Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar, ordering the good, forbidding the evil. Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hassana wa jadilhum bil lati ahsan. Call to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with fair preaching, admonition, and debate with them in a good way. These ayat are talking about whom? Talking about Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book. Wa jadilhum bil lati ahsan. Think about the Muslim ummah, the Muslims around you. How are you supposed to debate with them? Be rude, harsh, make takfir upon them. Make, uh, make them as innovators, take them away from the path of Allah and throw them in the hellfire. No, call to the way of Allah and with fear, preaching, admonition. Remind them, it will strengthen your own deen and make you think that I need to become those individuals who practice what I preached you need to other individuals. And in conclusion we find, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Once again, you make that path. Allah subhanahu will make you firm inside this dunya and inside the akhirah. But the most important, important pinnacle point is blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never ever think that you remaining firm, remaining steadfast, is from your own self. Even the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you find inside the Quran, وَلَوْلَا أَنْ ثَبَّتْنَاكَ لَقَدْ كِتَّتْ تَرْكَنُوا إِلَيْهِمْ شَيْءٍ قَلِيلًا If we hadn't made you steadfast, you would have slightly inclined towards the disbelievers, towards the Quraysh, in the temptations that they offered, they were trying to offer towards you. But we made you firm and steadfast. So likewise, the way of the believer is always to think, Ya Allah, make me steadfast. Not for the sake of people, the sake of humanity, but for your own sake. That when you return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a qalbin salim, with a pure heart, with devotion and commitment. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us is فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. That is a key secret for the believer. If you develop that, envelope that inside your life, that wherever you are, you try to focus upon fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can, you'll be successful wherever you go. 
and you will be upon istiqama. And remember, there is no obedience to the creation at the expense of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ta'a illa fi ma'roof. There's only obedience in the good things. That will make you become steadfast. And we have to face these challenges. And as I began, we mainly these challenges are very, very small and petty, but they become very difficult for us to overcome, to stop and to pray and to express ourselves to non-Muslims, what our belief is, what it entails, the way that we need to dress, the way we need to behave. But if you remain focused, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up the doors. As you find inside the Quran, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَةً وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu will provide a way out for that individual. We'll provide a way out for that individual. It will only be a matter of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in conclusion give us all the tawfiq and ability to remain steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts us up from this world in a state of focus and devotion and makes us return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pure and a sound heart. Barakallahu feekum inshallah.